Hi everybody. Um, thank you for joining me for day 16 of the Advent Calendar Makes. Um, and we're going to be making um, my Ice Queen necklace. Um, but before that, um, I'll talk you through uh, everything that we're using um, and the tools and products. But before we get onto that, um, we need to open the box so I can show you exactly what we've got to work with. So day 16, these are really, really pretty. So we've got, if I can open that, we've got a little um, bag of, um, that sort of spacers jump rings. Um, but you've got 10 of those, which are really useful. And I've used those in the necklace part uh, for the pendant. And then we've got this strand of beautiful um, rainbow beads. So they're glass rainbow beads, um, but they're really pretty because they've got a really lovely shiller to them. So they're, they're almost like uh, a moonstone finish on them. They're faceted, and I think they're at eight by six mil. Um, they've got a really good drill hole, um, so they're perfect um, for a lot of your makes. Um, and I've used them for um, this pendant. So we've got the Ice Queen, I'll just move those out of the way. The Ice Queen necklace, so I've used um, seven of the um, beads in the, the pendant section of the um, necklace, seven in the bar that actually holds uh, the pendant, and then I've used four on each side um, on the chain. Uh, so you've got lots left over to do your own projects and do other things, okay? So if I just talk you through what I'm going to use, what I've added to um, the advent calendar to um, make the necklace and uh, pendant. So I've added in some 0.4 wire. Now we're using the 0.4 wire for um, our, the wrap sections. Um, a 0.8 wire um, because we're going to sort of channel set the beads. So we need two pieces of that to um, set the beads into. I've got seven of the rainbow beads here to make the pendant. Uh, I've also got um, a small length of chain um, and the little spacers obviously from the um, box 16. I've also got a clasp, two jump rings and a little um, silver spacer bead which goes at the um, neck of the pendant. Uh, and the tools that we're going to use are quite basic. So we're using wire cutters, flat nose pliers and round nose pliers. So um, not complicated tools and actually the technique that we're going to do isn't over complicated but I think the um, effect that you get is really really pretty. So uh, to start off what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to channel set the um, rainbow beads into the 0.8 wire. So if I move all of these out of the way so we can get going and save those for just a little while. So I've got two lengths of 0.8 wire. Now the length um, is probably um, probably 11, 10 or 11 inches. Um, but obviously it depends on the size of the pendant that you want to make. If you want to make the pendant a little bit larger, obviously you'll need a little bit more wire. Um, or if you, want to, if you want to make it a little bit smaller, you want to add less beads, you can make it a little bit smaller. So, but initially you'll need two lengths of uh, 0.8. We then need to bring in some 0.4. Um, you can use 0.4 or you could use a 0.25 if you want to. Um, the 0.25 obviously will take um, a little bit longer to build up. So for me, um, I'm a bit impatient. <laughs> so speed for me is um, the 0.4 builds a lot quicker. So I'm just going to straighten out that 0.4 wire. Not too much because I don't want to... Um, work hard on it too much. So we need to bring in the beads and what we're going to do, we're going to channel set them together in a row, sort of just like that. So what we need to do, we need to channel set them into the middle and we want a gap at either end and that's going to create the rest of the pendant and then carry on to do the bail. Okay, so we need to um, set them into this little section in the middle. But rather than going to the end of the 0.4, what I would do is I would probably try and take um, 
about a metre, metre and a half of the 0.4 if you can, and then leave maybe half a metre at this end and then start wrapping at that point. So what we're going to do is we're going to just hold the 0.8 and then we're going to wrap the 0.4 around just once, just there. And then um, we're going to take the end of the wire, pass it through one of the rainbow beads and bring that to the end. So that's going to sit, if I move those out of the way, that's going to sit next to that 0.8 wire we've got there. We're then going to bring in our second piece of 0.8 wire and we're going to bring it in and it's going to go underneath, uh, sorry, on top of this wire, our excess wire that we're keeping here um, and underneath our second 0.8 wire. Okay, so then we just want to make sure that the lengths of the 0.8 are together so they haven't moved too much and then we're going to hold the wires and I'm holding them here with my thumb and finger so that they don't close up because as you wrap around um, just try and keep your tension you want it so that it's snug wrapped around this wire but you don't want it pulled uh, too tight that it starts to pull in your wire there so sit your bead in there bring the wire to the back and through the middle of that channel there and then wrap around okay so that's your first um, bead set in place there so we need to do that along so now again we're going to go around the back over to this side over and as you come over bring the wire all the way across if you bring the wire all the way across it puts a bend in that wire and it makes it easier then for you to get a nice snug wrap on there okay so now you're back in the position that we're in to start so then we pick up our second second bead and pop that in and then again we need to hold everything in place so what i would do is hold the beads in place as you're holding that bead down what it's doing is actually holding this space out here so you know that that space is going to stay there and again bring it to the back through that channel and wrap around and now we're going to bring it to the back again bring it all the way forward and then back through that channel and round again so you've got two of the beads set in there okay so if i just quickly do the um, do the others the thing is these beads are so sparkly it's sometimes hard to find the the drill hole okay so quickly again round there and if you find it easier rather than wrapping around the back without seeing that you can once you get to that point turn it over and then wrap around again so you're pulling that towards you take it back and then you're again in that position. So we're going to do that and set in all seven, seven beads. Okay. So I'll just do that really quickly. But I love channel setting and I think it's really uh, relaxing. And I love the fact that it's a bit sad, but I love the fact that uh, channel setting pieces look really neat on the back as well as, as well as the front. So again, flip that over. Try not to get your tension too much because you want, see how open this is on this side, you want it to be the same on that side. So you've got um, an even balance when you actually come to doing your, your weaving. Okay, so again, we'll just pick that one up. Try not to do what I've just done and get a kink in your wire. If you get a kink in the wire, just take your time, straighten that out and just rub your fingers through it over it so that it takes out any kinks because otherwise you're going to have if it sort of knots then you're going to have a real dink in the wire and it won't go through the bead or it will look won't look very good when you actually get to your weaving section okay so just two more so again pop that in wrap that round 
over and once you've you're sort of used to doing um, this technique it really can be quite speedy so it can you can do things sort of pretty quickly right so this is the final one so now we've got our final bead in place there okay so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna bring it back to the top and wrap around as we did so now we've got our beads channel set into that those two sections of wire and we've got a wire at either end and hopefully you've got about um, half a meter at either end uh, if not don't worry because you can add in when you get to do the weaving sections right so we've got our um, beaded sections in there so what we need to do now we need to bring in if I just show you this this piece that I've got we've done this little section so now what we need to do we need to do this woven section um, but what we want we want it to start the width of the bead but then we want it to graduate up to almost a point so that we can bring that together um, and start making the bail of the pendant okay so what I, I mean you can do whatever weave really that you want but I thought the figure of eight weave um, is a really nice simple weave um, that looks really effective so I've already done two wraps on there so I'm going to do one more around you see we've got three wraps on that section there and then we're coming through and underneath this wire and again I'm going to wrap three so it's a figure of eight weave but it's three wraps on either side um, and now at this point what I'd say is I'll show you um, what I mean you don't want your tension to be too too great at this point because you don't want to start pulling this in too soon okay so we're just doing that around so three around three so that's three on that side and then underneath and round this side now what I'd say is because we don't want our tension to be too strong don't just wrap around there bend that across as we did before and bring it through and do that first wrap really carefully and slowly and then your, your next two wraps won't actually pull in that wire it's that first wrap that you do that will pull in the wire okay so we're just going to do that for a little while so you do three on each side and I'll show you that weave then And try and keep um, the wraps nice and close together. So we've got three there. And three there. And I'll just, I'll just do this last one and then I'll show you the weave. I'm just going to cut a bit of this wire off because it's a little bit, little bit long okay so that's two two and three right so now you can see we've got a nice weave there I mean if you did two and two then that would be a lot closer um, I've got three and three so it, you've got that little bit of a gap between um, between the actual weaves and what you're going to do you're going to continue doing that along until you get to a point where you think um, you've got enough of the the rest of the pendant so what you're going to have is if I bring in this little section here this so what we're doing we're looking at doing this woven section the length of this section here so it depends on how long you want that section to be so if you want that a little bit shorter uh, that's or longer then then obviously it depends on what you want to do so I'm just going to do a few more and then I'll show you how we bring it bring that in to form the point at the top so what we need so what we need to do now is you just if I'm at that point and I think okay so I want that to start tapering tapering in I can just literally bend those wires in a little bit 
and then I can increase my ten the tension on the, on the wraps. And what the tension then will do, we'll start to pull, pull that wire in, okay? So we'd still do our three and three all the way along until we get to a length that we're happy with. And actually uh, wire weaving like this is really, um, <laughs> I find it really therapeutic. So, um, and you can see that as I'm doing that now, you can see that is actually going in, it's sort of tapering up. So I would continue that until I get to the point that I want. And obviously once you've done that and you've got that on what that side you'll need to repeat it on the the other side so you've got a mirror image um, on the other side so that when we then come to form the pendant um, everything is sort of matched and equal okay let me just do a little bit more two three and I'll show you how then that that is actually pulling, pulling in. Okay. So you can see there that that is actually then tapering up. And what I would do is I would continue that um, along until you get to the length that you want. And obviously then you'll, you'll do that on the other side um, until you've got a mirror image on the other side. Okay. Now I've got a piece that I've actually prepared um, to move on to the next section, um, but I've just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> so if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna bend down and collect that little piece. Sorry about this. Right, okay, we're back. Let me get my chair, otherwise I'm sticking out of the top. There, right, so now, um, you can see how that's tapering in and you would just do the same on the other side so you end up with this little section and try and just uh, be mindful that you want them to be um, similar because when when the pendant is brought together you want them to be of a obviously as close as possible to the actual size of the, the, the close as possible to a match really so that the, the pendant looks balanced Okay, so when you get to the end, um, I've got some excess wire here. So I'm gonna leave that on because what I can do, I can use that then to make the bail. So to actually make the, uh, the pendant shape here. So now what we've done, we've done this little section, we've done our woven section. We now need to shape that pendant around before we do the detail on there, okay? So um, as it's a, a point eight, it's quite malleable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna shape, shape that with my fingers. And as you bring this round, the, the weave sort of shapes with it. So it's a nice, what you don't wanna do is bend that too fast in the middle there, because you don't want sort of any angles. You want it nice and smooth. <coughs> so just, Take your time, bring that round. You don't want to rush this, you want to take your time. So, so you can see that's already starting to shape up. The other thing I'm going to show you is this um, weave here, as you saw, that pulled away from there. That's because I um, hadn't got any excess wire left here. So I added a piece. So just be mindful, if you add wire in at this point, when you shape it, it could sort of come apart there. So it might come away from it. So what you need to do is just make sure that that weave is pushed against the beads. It's not a problem as long as you make sure it's pushed against the beads before you um, secure the pendant in place. Okay. So again, we're just gonna do that. Bring that around until we're happy with the shape. So that's roughly the shape. And uh, as with all our jewelry that we make, everyone is different. And this one is slightly larger than 
um, the one on the bus, the, the original one that I made. There we go. So I'm happy with that shape of pendant now, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to put in our detail. So on here, I've got some wire detail here that comes around. Um, and obviously we've got wires that go to make the bail. So what we're looking at is the inside wires, <coughs> excuse me, are gonna be the detail on here. And the outside wires are gonna be the bail wires. So if you just take the bail wires, the outer wires, and just kink those out. So let's just do that. I'm gonna kink those out. So they're gonna be the bail, bail wires. So now we've got these two inner wires that we need to bring down here just to make that detail on the pendant. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, flat nose pliers and I'm gonna pop the plier in at the top of the weave where the weave ends. So this is on the inner wire and I'm gonna bend that back towards the bottom of the pendant, okay? And then I'm just gonna take my um, flat nose pliers and give that a bit of a squidging, okay? And then I'm gonna shape that slightly, just with my finger, just to get a nice curve so that it sits down the middle of that woven section. Right, so now we're gonna hold that in the middle of that woven section and I'm gonna pop my thumb on top just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna plop my, my pot pliers just above that bead. So I'm just popping the pliers in there, just not too far above, but just over the bead. And I'm gonna make a, a bend in the wire going inwards. So I've got my wire coming down the center of that um, woven section and then it's going over to the center of the pendant, the open section of the pendant. Now what we need to do is bring that around. Well, that's quite long um, and I don't wanna misshape anything. So I'm actually gonna cut that just so that it's easier for me to get it through and around, okay? So what we need to do now is hold that in place because we don't want that to move. Grab that with your pliers and bring it around. You can shape that around if you want to with the pliers. There we go. So we've got that wrapped around and it's going across the back there. So I'm gonna straighten that up, pull it back into place, holding that wire in the middle with my finger and thumb there. I'm then gonna take the end of the wire and bring it across the front there so we want it to meet the bend just there and that's slightly too long so I'm just gonna cut that off there we go so cut that off and then take flat nose pliers pop those in at that point and give that a squidge in there so that's the first um, wire detail so we've got the wire coming down bending into the middle around and then finishing at the front there, okay? So if I just do the other one quickly, so again, we're gonna take our pliers and bend the wire back towards the bottom, give it a squidge, bring it round with my finger there, there and there, and then we're then gonna bend that into the middle as we did before just there, cut that off so that we don't have to manipulate the wire too much. This is my tail that's left on there, so if I move that out of the way. So hold that in place, bring that round. Actually, I'll pull that over a little bit more. And then bring that round again and then cut that off. Obviously you'll take, take more time and 
and then squidge that down. So if you use your flat nose pliers to press that back in to there. And I've bent that a little bit, so I'm just going to try and shape that up again. There. So now we've got our wire detail on the front of both sides. So now we can bring that together, and now you can see how that naturally forms the bale. So I'm just going to bring that around a little bit more, that section. We want those two wires to meet at the top. There, so that's going to form the bale just there. And we've got our wire already left in place, so we can use that to do um, the weaving that we want to do. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring those together and wrap this wire around. I'm just going to open those out a little bit more. And actually, what I'll do, I've got a bead. What I did is I, I, there it is, found it. Right, okay. So first of all, put, pop on your beads. It's probably the easiest way to do it rather than have the bead sit on top of the wrap. So we place our bead in the middle of the, um, the opening to the bale there. So just bring it and make sure that everything is together and that bead sitting nicely in the center there. So now we wrap around, and then you can wrap around on this side just to make sure that that's nice and secure. So I'll do three wraps on there because that's the, the wrap that we're going to do. So now we've got our uh, pendant section in place, so we now need to do our bale. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to straighten these out as much as I can and then decide how wide I want this bale to be. So I don't want it actually that wide. So I'm just going to bring it in slightly. There. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to weave part way, but I don't want the bale to be that wide at the bottom because obviously once we fold it over, it's going to be too wide at this section here. So we're going to weave so much and then we're going to bring it in. So I've done three wraps on that side. So again, it's the same weave that we did on the body of the pendant. We bring it through and over the back and around again three times on this side. And again, you don't want um, too much tension on this because you want this bale to be quite open so far along, okay? So I haven't got a lot of wire left on here, but I can show you then how to add in if we run out. So I'm gonna do three on either side. And again, you want to keep the, um, Keep the wraps really nice and tight at this point if you can. Because this is at the front of the bale and you just want that to look really, really neat. And again, if you bring the wire all the way over and through, it just makes it a lot easier for you to, to handle. And across. So what we would do is you would continue doing that until you've got to the length of the bale that you want. And I'll show you how we come back in. So I've done this one and I've done that much of it on the open bale because that's sort of the length of the bale that I, I'm looking at. And then from that point, I've started to go in. So when I bring that back round, it's gonna be roughly the same width as the neck of the bale, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue this until I run out and then I'll show you how, if you run out, how to add in, add in your wire. And then show you how to just decrease the wrap, okay? So at this point now, I've uh, almost run out, so I'll just do two more. Right, and one more on that side. So I've only got this little tail left, so I'll, I want to add in some point four. So what I will do is I'll do one wrap, because I want three on this side, remember, but um, I'm just gonna do one wrap and leave that, leave that tail on. I'm gonna cut off another section of the point four.
so now what I'd do is I'd bring that wire and let it sit next to the wire that's exiting there but in that direction because what I want to do then is I want to continue that wrap around instead of bringing this around I want to bring this new wire around so I'm going to hold the wire there at the back and then wrap in so I've got to do two more wraps on that side to keep it even and then get that wire out of the way and then do my three wraps as normal on this side so what I do then is I do a few more of the three So now we've added in our wire and, and, and it's sort of invisible there, you can't really see. But then what you'd need to do is come to the back, cut off the excess, but this one that's going over, you want to cut it a little bit longer, uh, a millimetre or so longer than the bale. You don't want it to be right at the back, but it's actually going to be inside of the bale, so it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be next to the skin. So cut off that and give that a bit of a squidge in. Do the same with the other one. And as it's behind the bale, I'm, I'm not that worried about it. So that's added in that wire. Um, so don't ever worry if you um, run out of wire or you've miscalculated, um, it's not the end of the world, okay? So I've got three wraps there and then I think that's the length of the bale I want to do. So what I will do is I'll just actually, I'll use my um, pliers, pop pliers in at that point and just bring the wire in. At that point there, okay? So I'm gonna kink those out just so it's easier for me to get my wire in. And then we need to wrap it again, but then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be decreasing the wraps just the way we did on the the body of the um, pendant okay so you just then keep wrapping in the same way three and three or two and two whatever you decide to do but when you get to the point where you're decreasing it has a tendency to slide up so just make sure that while you're wrapping this one you're holding this one in place because it will have a tendency to sort of um, slide and you don't want any gaps at the um, in between so you've got that and you will continue that wrap until you get to a point here that is sort of the same width um, length as that so I would bring that in a little bit more maybe and go to that point there okay so once you've done that you're at that stage just there okay so now we've got our pendant bail um, woven We've got some excess wire here, which we can actually now cut off. So I'm gonna cut that off. And again, don't have to worry too much about that because that's gonna be inside of the bale. There we go. So now what we need to do, we need to shape the bale. Now, if you've got a uh, bale making pliers or you've got um, a mandrel or something, or a, a, a pen, if you've got a pen or something just to pop in there, just to shape that up, or you can just do that with your fingers. I'd bring the bale forward a little bit first, and then bring it around, and shape that really carefully. I have got a mandrel actually, so let me see if I can find that. If not, you could use the handle of your pliers if they're narrow enough. Let me try this one, there we go. Just to get you started, so you get a nice shape bail there okay so now what we need to do is lock that bale in place because obviously that that's open but at this stage we want to check that the width of this bale will go over the necklace part of the pendant of the necklace so I know that that's going to easily fit over that section there and I'll talk you through how we do this section it's almost identical but it's finished off in a different way so as long as your bale slides over your necklace section that's fine but you could even uh, make a smaller bale and just pop it on a chain if you want to okay 
So these are a little bit long again, so I'm going to cut those down just so that they go through the middle of the pendant without me manipulating the wire too much. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of a kink in that and bring that together. So we're closing up that bale like so and then we've got our two wires here. So I'm going to pop my um, flat nose pliers in and catch um, the first one and bring it forward and then the second just holding that in place to make sure that it's all nice and neat. And now what we're going to do we're going to take this one bring it up towards the bale and then across across the neck of that woven section just underneath the bead okay and on this one we're going to bring this one up towards the bale and then just across to that way so you can see they're both then so you've got a nice neat finish here just underneath the bead and we've got our wires then coming out at the back so what we need to do is continue that wrap around to the front sorry to the rest of the back and then cut off about halfway across that section there the woven section so that when you give that a bit of a pressing with your flat nose pliers it sort of disappears in and then just rub your finger over that to make sure it's not uh, sharp edges but because we've got this bale here anyway that will sit away from your skin so it's um, it, it's fine if it's if it, if it is sort of um, not as neat as you want it to be but you don't want any sharp edges so just give that a little bit of a press in that one's fine so now that's the bale section completed so we've, we've done the channel setting the weaving the detail and the actual bale so we've woven the bale and we've got that so that's our pendant section done so now for the necklace to to actually hang that on so eventually that will sit see now that's a little bit tight again now so what we can do what we need to do is just pop in our pliers give that a bit of a pull out and hopefully that will that's it so if you find after you've done the wrapping and you've secured this in this is a little bit narrow just pop your pliers in and open that up and that will sit there so that is going to sit on the necklace like so okay so to make the necklace part you do it exactly the same way same dimensions um, seven beads and the section of woven sections there but instead of shaping them around to form the pendant we're literally going to the seven beads so we've got our central point beads there so I'm going to hold either side of that central bead and just try and make it more of an angle than than we did with the um, with the pendant so it will sit just at that point there okay and then to finish off at this end we're going to do the same sort of thing so the outer wires they're not going to be the bale this time they're actually going to be the loop that attaches to <coughs> excuse me to the chain and the inner wires again are going to be the detail so <coughs> excuse me sorry about that right so again we're just going to do I'll do those quickly. I'll wrap that around. Cut that off. And flatten that down. So you're actually following the same pattern that um, we had on the pendant. It just adds that nice, nice detail to the um, the finished thing I think there we go I'll do this one quickly so we bend that around that one's uh, bend that a little bit more and then bring that round again across the front cut 
cut that off and flatten that down okay so now we've got our necklace section and our pendant section so here um, what uh, all I did is I, I made a loop so what I would do is I'd cut that down probably to, to a couple of centimeters nerve-wracking to cut that off when you've just done that but um, be brave and then um, you could do actually do a double loop if you wanted to so just literally wrap that roll it like so so you've got a loop just there and if I do the same on this side and if you do that so it sits next to it like so you've got two loops then and they look nice and neat from the front and that will sit just there so that's the pendant and the necklet part you know I need to straighten that up a bit because you've been handling that quite a lot there so now what I did is I actually added chain and some more of the beads to to these um, sections and we've got these lovely little spacer beads within the box um, so I'm just going to take a few of these um, beads off this strand they are really pretty really sparkly so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a point eight I'm going to take a length of the point eight and um, pop a loop in in the end so round those pliers make a loop bend that back and you can use uh, bow making pliers if you want to so you get a consistent loop. but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check that I can pop that through there and that will fit nice and neat so that will go through our little beads that we've got then I'm going to pop the point eight through one of the beads I'm just going to bend that pop my pliers in on top of the bead almost directly on top of the bead and I'm just going to make a an angle in there I'm going to cut that down to probably a centimeter or so popping around those pliers again and make a another loop okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on another of the little beads so you've got these little sections I'm just going to do one more and I'll show you then how to add that to the chain so try and keep it the same size if you want to or if you feel you need to you can mark the pliers uh, with a mark pen or something and then open that pop it back onto the other side of your little spacer jump ring close that up pop on your next bead and again make an angle just above the bead there bend that around cut it off to a centimeter or so round those pliers and a, another loop just there now what I did, I did four, that one's a bit small, let's do another one, a bit more. I did four of these um, beads. So we've got um, our sections there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more and then I can show you how we attach this to the pendant and then to the chain so um, I'll just take another little section of the point eight make another loop again and bend that back so we've got a nice little loop there now what we're going to do this time we're going to pop it in to the end of that one so what you want to finish up you want to finish on a loop at either end so we've got a loop at that end, a loop that we can open 
and attach to something so I need to just do the same on this side so however many you do you need to end with a loop on either end okay so again about a centimeter or so depending on how big you want your your loops there we go so now we've got that section there so we've got let me just give that a bit of a that loop there was a bit small right so we've got um, three beads there and we've got our little spacers in between and we've got a loop at either either end so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the loops and attach it to our loop that we've just made on that necklet part there okay so now we've got that section there and we've still got a loop at this end so I'm going to take a section of chain that one and I'm going to open that and add add in my chain okay and then what I would do then is um, this will go around the neck I'd repeat that on that end so obviously you would have the same however many beads you put on here you would put on this section just here so repeat these and add them in then once I've done that I would measure the length and see where I am um, and cut down the chain appropriately to what I want um, so I'll I'd cut that wherever I needed to be if I wanted whatever length I want okay and then at this end here now we're going to add in a jump ring and a clasp so we add a jump ring and a clasp and close that there and obviously once you've done that on the other side um, you put the jump ring on that side and that would attach together and if I can just bring in the necklace the finished necklace you'll see where we've got to um, so that's basically um, the design so um, we've talked through the pendant the necklace part and the chain so you can uh, modify it really to however you want you could do a full chain of these because you've got enough beads within the strand um, so there's lots of things that you can do to adapt that design to um, to whatever you want on the original one I did more beads on here um, than I've done on this one so again it, it's up to you how you want to finish that off um, and as I say you can make the bale a little bit smaller and um, add, a, add a chain to that if you if you wanted to so it was just um and i called it the ice queen because i think the beads are just so beautiful and they they've got this real shiller of um of like moonstone and it just as soon as i opened it it reminded me of ice so i really knew that i wanted to make a bit of a statement necklace um like that so that's pretty much um that's pretty much the tutorial and so it's um it's it's um it's been a real joy really being on um today and to do this and i really hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and i know you're going to be loving your um calendar because the products in there are just beautiful so I, like i say i hope you enjoyed it and it's been lovely to spend some time with you and um i hope you'll have a merry christmas and um i look forward to seeing you in the new year take care Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Jewelry Maker app. Head over to your app store now and search Jewelry Maker and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. 
click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured on today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's best sellers and highlights. Have you missed a show? Or want to watch one back? Then click on the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching On The Go with Jewelry Maker. Every day our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to jewellery making or a seasoned professional, you are sure to learn something new. We are live every day from 8am until 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Jewellery Maker has its own dedicated call centre with highly trained staff waiting to help you with your orders or any queries. Happy shopping with Jewellery Maker. Did you know that when you purchase with Jewelry Maker, you have a 30 day money back guarantee? Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Want to know what's going on in the next show? Then head over to our website, click on the TV guide. This will tell you who's presenting, which guest we have joining us, along with what's going on in each hour. If you ever miss a show, you can catch up by clicking on the day you missed and then click watch this show. You can also view what product was on and if it's still available to buy. Catch up on Jewelry Maker. Jewelry Maker are proud to be part of the Gemporia partnership. Our partnership family includes Jewelry Maker, Gem Collector, Gemporia, Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Jewelry Maker app. Head over to your app store now and search Jewelry Maker and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured on today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's best sellers and highlights. Have you missed a show? Or want to watch one back? Then click on the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days.